Today is April 12th. On the 12th of April 1992 opens the Euro Disney Resort with its theme park, which would later be known as Disneyland Paris. What was the original name of this theme park? Hello and welcome to a new episode of Smarter by the Second. Today I am joined with, uh, by Tim. Hi. Hello Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, Great. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Can you, uh, you. tell us something about yourself? Uh, well, I'm a third year student applied mathematics. I work with Lavinia in the education committee and yeah, I guess yeah. I'm here for You're the history thing. round. Hooray. Oh yeah, your history. Why are you uh, doing history? Well, I've had like a passive interest in history for quite some time and to be honest, I figured it is the best chance I yeah. had at like a trivia contest. You didn't want to study history, you chose mathematics instead? Well, or? there's a difference between being interested in yeah, something and being okay. good at something. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. Okay, but I hope you're good at it because... Uh, ah, we'll see. You have to win. <laughs> okay, best of luck. Thank you. In Norse mythology, there is a giantess named Skadi who is associated with winter, skiing and hunting. According to legend, Skadi was the daughter of a giant and was initially unhappy with her assigned home in the underworld. She eventually moved to the mountains and became a skilled hunter and skier. In some versions of the myth, Skadi even challenged the god Odin to a skiing race, demonstrating her prowess on the slopes. Today, Skadi is still celebrated in Scandinavian culture as a symbol of winter sports and outdoor adventure. Now we could go on and on talking about skiing and maybe even throw in a little something about ice skating for the real Dutchies in our public. But this is a history round. So here are then nine gods and creatures belonging to the Norse mythology. So I will uh, give you a description and you will have to guess which god or creature right. of belonging to Norse mythology uh, I'm saying. So the gods and creatures are uh, Hel, Fenrir, Irpa, Loki, Odin, Thor, Freya, Lofim, and Hermod. Okay. Are you familiar <laughs> with the hospital? Well, um, I am decently familiar. Oh, okay, I would that's say good. I know uh, five of these quite well, and the other four I'm going to have to guess. Oh, I think I know a few from uh, from Marvel. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is too. <laughs> they changed a few things, I think, <coughs> there because... Loki and Thor are not real brothers in the Correct. Movie. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, you know I something. I know that. Yeah. Okay, you need five correct answers for this. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, and the first one. The father of the gods and the god of wisdom, war, oh, magic. Then. The goddess of the earth. Freya. God of strength, protection, war, Thor. storms. Goddess of death and the underworld. Hell. Goddess of love and marriage. Um, that's Freya and... Let's put earpad the other one. Okay. Spouse of Odin and goddess of fertility, love, beauty, magic, war, and death. Uh, let's go to Lofen. Messenger of the gods. Hermod. God of mischief. Loki. The monstrous wolf and son of Loki. Fenrir. Stop the time? Stop the time. Okay. You want to use any lifelines? Uh, no. No. How many do you think you have correct? You sounded confident. Uh, uh, I'm guessing five or six. <laughs> five or six? Okay. Well, let's check them. Okay, the first one. Uh, the father of the gods and the god of wisdom, war, magic, poetry, prophecy, victory and death. Long list. That's Odin. Now we have the goddess of the earth. That's Irpa. Now we have the god of strength, protection, war, storms, thunder and lightning. That's Thor. Now we have the goddess of the dead and the underworld. That's Hell. The Goddess of love and marriage is Lofen. Then we have uh, the spouse of Odin and the goddess of love, uh, fertility, beauty, magic, war and death. That's Freya. Then we have the messenger of the gods. That's Hermod. That means you have five correct answers. You're through Hooray. to the next round. The god of mischief is, of course, Loki. And then the monstrous wolf and son of Loki is called Fenrir. Okay. Wow, very That's well. Nice. Seven uh, correct answers. Well, on to the next round. It is no secret that Scotland dislikes England. In spite of the two, 
In spite of the fact that these two countries constitute together part of the United Kingdom, their rivalry is fierce. The two countries have a long history of conflict, dating back to the Middle Ages, with notable conflicts including the Scottish Wars of Independence, the Anglo-Scottish Wars and the Wars of the Three Kingdoms. Their rivalry was, and still is, of influence on world's history. Here are then nine historical rivalries between different countries and populations. So I will give you a description of, well, I will give you, um, you have to guess the country based on whom they were at war with, and sometimes okay. I'll say why. So you will, like, essentially just say a country they are at war with? Yeah, or a population. So okay. we have the Arabs, Carthage, England, Ottomans, Venice, Denmark, the United States of America, Java, and Russia. And you okay. need, again, five correct answers. Okay. Yeah? yeah? You ready? Okay, then the first country. They were at war on and off with France for about 700 England. years. Battled with Genoa for trade supremacy Venice. at sea. Uh, waged three epic wars against Rome for dominance. Carthage. Of launched a series of invasions into South Asia and the Indian subcontinent. Um, pass. Refused to pay tribute to China and subsequently destroyed the fleet sent to punish it. Um, well, pass. Fought many times with Sweden, usually over... Denmark. Waged multiple battles against the Persians across three different centuries. Um, the Arabs. Has been at odds with Poland for th thousands of years. Uh, Russia. Was locked in a fierce rivalry from 1945 to 1991 with the Soviet Union. America. Okay, you want to fill in the... Um, yeah, I'm going for the first one, Java, and the second one, the Ottomans. Okay, stop the time. Stop the time. Okay. How are you feeling about this? Do you want uh, to... I feel like I mixed up a lot, but I don't know where, so I'm going to use one Joker. Yeah, one, uh, one lifeline, yeah. one Joker, yeah. Okay, that's uh, 16 seconds deducted, but I see you still have uh, quite a lot of seconds, so it's fine. Let's check them. Okay, this country was on, on, at war on and off with France for about 700 years. It's England. They battled Genoa for trade supremacy at sea. That's Venice. They waged three epic wars against Rome for dominance of the Mediterranean Sea. Carthage launched a series of invasion into South Asia and the Indian subcontinent, the Arabs. Refused to pay tribute to China and subsequently destroyed the fleet sent to punish it. That's Java. And, uh, fought many times with Sweden, usually over Norway and usually with no decisive conclusion. That's Denmark. Uh, that means you have uh, five great answers. Waged multiple battles against the Persians across three different centuries. That's the Ottomans. Has been at odds with Poland for thousands of years. That's Russia. And was locked in a fierce rivalry from 1945 to 1991 with the Soviet Union. That's the USA. Ah, oh. oh, you didn't really need that. No, but and like... Better safe than sorry? So. Yeah, better safe than sorry. I was very unsure on what I answered at what point. I, so I, know. I was like, I might have mixed up two. And then I would have had two more incorrect answers, in which case I needed the... Yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. Okay, then the next round is for, uh, for six points. As you may very well know, the French are thieves and don't even want to recognize this. It suffices to, to take a look at the collection present at the Louvre and on how many of those works of art the French refuse to ever lend out to certain countries. Case in point, France would never lend the Mona Lisa to Italy, because they know it would never be returned. It belongs, after all, to Italy and not to France. France is, though, not the only country who is guilty of appropriation of goods originating from different countries. In fact, just as the Louvre is to France, the British Museum is the United Kingdom to an exposition of just how much the British have been able to steal over the years. Here are then nine stolen artifacts that are currently exposed at the British Museum and their countries of origin. So I will name the name of the artifact, and you have to guess from which country it originally is, uh, okay. originates. It might not actually be from uh, the country itself, but where it is now, because it could have been an older people, you know. Oh, like so uh, example, the mo modern day equivalent yeah, of whatever. For example, the Mayas would be Mexico or something. Okay. Okay, yeah. so the countries are Ethiopia, New Zealand, South Africa, 
Egypt, Greece, India, China, Brazil, and Nigeria. Got that? Yes. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, okay then the first one is the Benin bronzes. Ethiopia. The Parthenon marbles. Um, uh, Greece. The Rosetta stone. Egypt. Tipu's tiger. Um, India. Sarge Sarah Bartman. I'm sorry again. Sarge Sarah ba Bartman. Uh, Nigeria. Maori heads. Um, Brazil. The Magdala manuscripts. Um, China and the last one was not Brazil but South Africa. Luti. Um, New Zealand. Seeds of Avea brasilianis lenses, also known as the rubber tree. Brazil. Okay, and then the one to stop the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you need six correct answers. Yeah, I'm not using any. Not language. any. No. Okay, nice. Then uh, let's check them. Okay, the first was the Benin ben bronzes, which is from Nigeria originally. Then the Parthenon marbles are from Greece. Rosetta stone is from Egypt. Tipu's tiger, India. Then Sarcher, quote unquote, Sarah Bartman is from South Africa. Then the Maori heads are from New Zealand. The Magdala manuscripts are from Ethiopia. And then Luti is from China. And the seeds of Hevea brasiliensis, also known as rubber tree, is from uh, Brazil. Oh, let me. Oh, you didn't get it. Oh, I should have used lifeline. Yeah, I should have used one lifeline. Right. That's oh, why were you feeling so confident then? Uh, well, I wasn't, but I was continuous. Like the last two rounds, I underestimated myself. Oh, so I yeah. Don't... Yeah. Well, I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it's a shame that you're out in round three, but uh, I want to thank you for uh, for participating. Thank you for. Did you having enjoy me? it? Yeah, I did enjoy it. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, okay. Then we have a small participation award. A clock. Thank you. you. Okay, and uh, then we'll go on to the next contestant. And we're back with a new contestant, or not new, Eva. Hi. Hello, welcome back. How do you feel having a week to reflect on your, uh, your last week's performance? I feel more focused. You're focused, yes. aligned? Yes. Okay. I've meditated. Yeah. Watched a lot of movies. And I'm you're, ready. Uh, you're sure you're going to win, right? No. No? <sighs> okay. I really want a trophy, though. I've just <laughs> learned that apparently I get one. If well, I win. Yeah, you have to do the well, make the rounds good. Well, okay, best of luck. Thank you. The recent announcement that James Corden's late night show will be ending is some of the best news we've gotten in recent years. Here are nine talk show hosts, some of which are funny and some of which are more like James Corden. So, uh, you will just see a picture of the talk show host. They're mostly American, I think it's one Irishman. <laughs> and uh, you have to guess which they are. Um, so, we have Trevor Noah, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Oprah Winfrey, John Oliver, Jimmy Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, David Letterman, and Ellen DeGeneres. Are you familiar with them? Yes. Yeah, I, may, I hope so. I spend too much time on YouTube watching uh, late night talk show hosts. Oh, uh, okay. So, this will be an uh, easy round for you. Yes. Right? As long as they're holding animals, because that's the only videos I watch. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, you uh, need seven correct answers for this round. Okay. Let's start? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the first one. Uh, Jimmy F Kimmel. Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Conan O'Brien. Oprah Winfrey. Uh, Stephen Colbert. Uh, David Letterman. Trevor Noah. John Oliver, I love him. Stop. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, I want to switch the Jimmys, but honestly, they're almost identical in DNA if, personality. Yeah, are you, if you're sure about the rest of them, you only need seven correct answers. It doesn't you, matter. Then it doesn't much. really matter. You get an extra lifeline, though, if you have all uh, answers correct. I'll leave it. You leave it? Okay. Yeah. They're then, basically uh, the same person. Okay. It's Let's fine. check them. Okay. Um, so, the first one we have is Jimmy Kimmel. Then we have Ellen DeGeneres. Next up, Jimmy Fallon. 
Conan O'Brien, Oprah Winfrey, Stephen Colbert, David Letterman. That means you have uh, yeah seven correct. Trevor Noah and John Oliver. So nine correct. You get an extra right. nine. Oh, Very I'm really good. glad I didn't well, switch I, the sure Jimmy's. <laughs> yeah, you got them correct. Being American, so yeah, you can be proud. Uh, that's hard. I bet their wives can't tell them apart. <laughs> yeah, they do look alike. They do look alike. That's true. Okay, well done. Turn your gamer mode on. It's time for a true game around. Let's go, gamers. Here are nine game companies. So I will name the video game, and you all have to guess the distributing video game company. So this is going to go uh, worse. EA. Innersloth, Mojang, Ubisoft, Nintendo, Rockstar Games, Riot, Supercell, and Epic Games. Uh, I see you're <laughs> unsure about this. I know Nintendo. You have a lot of seconds, a lot of lifelines. All right. This is the round to use it, maybe? Yes, it, it will be, I think. Okay. Well, shall we just start? Mm-hmm. Okay. The first game is Pokemon. Nintendo. And we have Assassin's Creed. Rockstar? Sims. Oh. Ubisoft? Grand Theft Auto. I don't know. Uh, Epic Games? Minecraft. EA? A Fortnite. Riot? The League of Legends. Mojang? <laughs> Among Us. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Inter Inner Sloth. Clash of Clans. Supercell. Stop the time. Stop, Stop the time. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not really a question of do you want to use life? Yeah. How many? <laughs> how many? Uh, how you need seven correct answers. And each one costs 16 seconds. If yeah. I use three, how many seconds are there gone? Um, 48. 30, 48. Yeah, I guess I'll use three lifelines. Okay, well, let's check the answers then. Okay, the first game uh, was Pokemon. This is by Nintendo. And then we have Assassin's Creed. It's by Ubisoft. Then we have uh, The Sims. It's by EA. Then Grand Theft Auto uh, by Rockstar Games. Minecraft is by Mojang. Fortnite is by Ep Epic Games. League of Legends by Riot. Among Us is by Inner Sloth and Clash of Clans is by Supercell. Oh! I made it? You made it? Oh my holy. god. Holy! <laughs> holy oh. moly! <laughs> I was allowed to sure. curse? Um, yeah, we don't have enough viewers for us to be... <laughs> to uh, be complaining. Yeah. Oh, that was so close. I have absolutely no idea about any of those. No, I had a feeling. Except I for also, Nintendo. I maybe knew five or something. I, I didn't know enough. Well, congratulations on making it past round six, which means you have sort of won, but you have won a silver prize, let's say, like second prize. And now it is your choice to accept it or not. And if you accept it, then you stop here. But you can also choose to play two more rounds where you can have no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. But you get your seconds that you had left from the last episodes back, which is like more than 100, I believe. And then you can win the, well, the grand prize. Uh, I'll play. It'll you'll be fun. You'll play. Think, yeah, then you'll have about, uh, you'll see 299 seconds for two rounds. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of time to think. You have three lifelines. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You ready? Yes. Okay, well, best of luck. We're in the finale now, so. Oh, no. Okay. When James Michael Tyler, who played Gunther in the famous sitcoms Friends, passed away in 2021, every fan of the show was in shock. That proves that side characters do have a big impact on the show and the ones who watch it. Here are nine side characters. So you will see a picture of the side character and I will describe their relationship to one of the main characters and you will have to guess which show uh, they play in. Okay. So we have Breaking Bad, The Office, That 70s Show, Modern Family, Game of Thrones, Gilmore Girls, Peaky Blinders, Stranger Things, and Friends. Do you know that if you watch these shows? Um, I haven't watched a lot of these shows, oh. but I know a lot about these shows. Oh, okay. So maybe uh, on the Hopefully. description. They're not too much of a side character. 
Well, <laughs> they're not main characters anyway. Oh no. Okay, you need nine correct answers. So yeah. You're nine there. Okay, uh, then let's start. The first, first one. one is Bob is the neighbor of one of the main characters and the father of one of the other main characters. Then that 70s show? Janice has an on and off relationship with one of the main characters. Um, the friends. Elfie Solomons is a rival, but Peaky also on the... Uh, Priya is a little sister. Stranger of one Things? Of Saul Goodman is the lawyer who whitewashes money for the main character. He also has his own spin-off show. Breaking Bad? Egret is one of the main character's lovers. Uh, Game of Thrones. Dylan has an on and off relationship with one of the main characters. Gilmore Girls? Jan Levinson is the boss of uh, all the main characters and also dates one of them at one point. The Office. Taylor is the owner of Deuce's Market and Taylor's Old Fashioned Modern Family. Show. Stop the timer. Stop the timer. And uh, could I see who I put for... No, you can't see oh, your... I can't see them again? But you can use... Um, um, two or three, but I use two lifelines. Two lifelines. Okay. Then uh, let's check the answer. Let's so, see what it okay. is. Okay, so we had... Bob is the neighbor of one of the main, main char characters and the father of one of the other main characters. That's a 70s show. Janice has an on and off relationship with one of the main characters. With Ross, that's friends. Alfie Solomons is a rival, but also an ally of the main character. Tommy Shelby, that's Peaky Blinders. Priya is the little sister of one of the main characters from Stranger Things. I forgot, it's Lucas, right? I think, I don't know. And then Saul Goodman is the lawyer who whitewashes money for... The main character, he also has his own spin-off show. It's called Better Call Saul. That's for Breaking Bad. Egret is one of the main character's lovers. Um, the two actors are married in real life. It's oh. Game of Thrones. Dylan has an uh, on and off relationship with one of the main characters. Spoiler alert, they end up married. It's Modern Family. Um. Jan Levinson is the boss of all the main characters and also dates one of them. With Michael Scott, it's from The Office. And then... Taylor is the owner of Deuces Markets and Taylor's old-fashioned soda shop and candy store. He also runs the town meetings as town's select man. It's Gilmore Girls. Hey! Hey! And uh, of course, one lifeline is uh, useless, but because you have nine correct, you get an extra lifeline in going into the next round. And you still have well, well over... Uh, I have enough time for it, hopefully. well over three minutes. Uh, okay. Well, good luck in the last, last round. <laughs> all right. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd is the most streamed song on Spotify of all time with a baffling 3.480 billion streams. This is the definition of a big hit. Here are nine albums and their biggest hit songs. So you will see on the screen uh, nine albums and I will say what the biggest hit song on the album is and you will have to guess on what album uh, they are. So, uh, do you know the albums? Or? Not at all. This is not going to go well. No, are you? Do you listen to a lot of music? It's a very specific genre. Or? I listen to a lot of music, but I don't really know albums. That's the issue. Oh, do you listen to playlists? Or yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, first of all, let's uh, read the album. So, we have The Marshall Mathers LP2, A Night at the Opera, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. <laughs> A Regular Spectacular, Demon Days, Hunky Chateau, The Dark Side of the Moon, Dam, and Currents. Well, you want to start? Are you ready? <sighs> this is it. This is not going to go well, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. No. Okay, let's start. The first song and album is Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. <laughs> uh... A Night at the Opera? The less I know, the better. I don't know. The Dark Side of the Moon? Uh, under the Bridge? Uh, blood Sugar and Sex Magic? Humble. Mm, currents? Money. Oracular Spectacular. A Rap God. A uh, Dam. The Kids. Marshall Matters LP2. 
so you know feel good incorporated <laughs> that's a good name um honky chateau um rocket man demon days is the only last one but i want to switch a few around you have uh, <laughs> all the time i have all the time um can you read them again is that loud? no oh crap uh can i switch the the happy one the the one with the cute name to is, is that enough information that kids yeah the happy kids um to oracular spectacular okay. yeah i i'll use both of my lifelines but it's not happening okay then stop the time yeah stop the time Okay, and they all use two lifelines to try and make the best of it. It's not going to go well. Not going to go well. <laughs> no. Okay. Say a little prayer, maybe. I pray to the probability gods that say I'm going to fail. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, read out the correct answers. Yeah. So, our uh, first hit song was Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. This is on the album A Night at the Opera. Then we had The Less I Know the Better by Tame Impala on the album Currents. Then we had Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers on Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Then Humble by Kendrick Lamar on the album Damn. Then Money is by Pink Floyd. It's on their album The Dark Side of the Moon. Then Rap God by Eminem. It's uh, the Marshall Mathers LP2. Kids by MGMT on Oracular Spectacular. And Feel Good Incorporated by Gorillaz on Demon Days. And Rocket Man by Elton John on Hunky Chateau. And well, yeah, sad, but you tried. I tried, and uh, the first seven rounds went really well. Yeah, so this was very much take... a weakness. I don't know anything about yeah, albums, it can happen, anyways. I want to thank you for participating. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, this was fun. Okay, well, uh. Well, it's more fun when I know once what some of them are. I had absolutely no idea for any of those last yeah, ones. Okay. Well, as an award for your participation, we have uh, a clock. Thank you. Well, this was it for today's episode. The answer to the viewers' question is Euro Disneyland. Thank you all for uh, watching and see you next week.